Okay, so I know that you uh, started at least planning for Arkham City when um, you included that special room that no one found. Uh, <laughs> how early in development, uh, how late in development in uh, Arkham Asylum did you start working on Arkham City? Yeah, the most obscure secret ever in video game history, I think that one. Um, we started thinking about it uh, sort of six months before launch, so what's that, kind of April, May in uh, 2009, because, you know, it was important to us that the story existed within a continuity that made sense. So, you know, we wrote what would happen before, we wrote what would happen afterwards. So when we came to the end of Arkham Asylum, we thought, you know, this is uh, a story that we hope continues. We just didn't know how gamers were going to find it, how you know, Batman fans are going to respond to it. So we put that in and we thought, if no one finds it, then no problem. But if we do get the opportunity to make a follow-up, then this is going to be, you know, a relevant connection between the two. So, you know, lucky for us, it's all worked out. Yeah, how, how much did you, mo oh, sorry, did you refine the combat from Arkham Asylum into Arkham City much? I think we made a really strong start with the combat in Arkham Asylum, so thinking about where we go next with it, um, we didn't want to, just want to say, yeah, it worked well enough, so let's just hold on to it. We wanted to evolve every aspect of the game, so we doubled the number of animations that Batman has in combat. So he's got twice as many moves, but the real focus was on what enemies can do to you. So you can see guys coming at you in coordinated attacks, two or three guys simultaneously, also picking up weapons and coming at you like that. So there's a lot of uh, strategic depth to the game that uh, we didn't have in Arkham Asylum. But I think a lot of the, the sophistication in combat really comes down to the AI more than Batman. And uh, it's notable that instead of having the players start with no inventory, you decided they should just start with most of the stuff they ended with in Arkham Asylum. I think that was really important to uh, marry the two games together. You know, so from a narrative perspective, uh, Arkham City picks up about 18 months after uh, Arkham Asylum finished, but there's loads of cross-references between the two stories. Uh, and all of the, the exploration and rewards that you got in Arkham Asylum in terms of gadgetry you know, similarly, we wanted to, to marry the two. So you start Arkham City with five of those gadgets, and then the functionality that you get throughout the game uh, is new because the challenge in Arkham City is new. But then there's new gadgets on top of that. So you end you'll end the game with twelve gadgets in total. One of the complaints about the first game was that the, the detective mode was so useful that players found themselves just continuing with detective mode constantly on. Um, I know. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? I mean, I, I recall that Zero Punctuation said that the uh, people who designed the levels must have been really disappointed that no one could see the kind of work that they put into it, yeah, yeah. and everything ended up looking uh, blue and purple. He also did say it was one of his favorite games of the year, so, uh, you know, Zero Punctuation usually slams a lot of stuff, but it was one of the, the more kind of praising reviews that I've uh, seen of his. Yeah, I mean, Detective Mode was something that we... Go, 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 go. Are you sure? Yeah. So, um, what else? Do you want me to answer the Detective Mode? Yeah, go ahead. We have made changes. Um, so with Detective Mode, yeah, I think a lot of people who played Arkham Asylum enjoyed a lot of aspects um, of the kind of psychology and the detective, mode, uh, detective side of Batman. But Detective Mode itself, in terms of balancing, was kind of open to exploitation. So, you know, we've re rebalanced the kind of information you get when you're in Detective Mode so that you can use it for forensics, so you can use it for hunting down uh, a criminal who's left a path. But when you're in combat or when you're navigating, it doesn't make sense to have it on. So we'll motivate the player to turn it off. Now, the other thing is in uh, the first Arkham Asylum, you had, at least for PlayStation 3 owners, an option to do the challenge maps as the Joker. With Arkham City, you've really gone up to 11 in terms of alternate characters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, having Robin and we just announced Nightwing as playable characters in the challenge mode offers players the opportunity to control a character who's got weapons. You know, that's the thing about Batman or, or Catwoman, that neither of them carry weapons by default. So uh, Nightwing and, and Robin really offer you the opportunity for a totally different sensation in combat. So as you have uh, Catwoman fighting in the background, you had to create an entirely new style for her, as well as probably for, Bat uh, for Robin and Nightwing. Well, it would have helped a lot if Catwoman had a cape, because then her navigation could just follow Batman's, but she doesn't. So the way that she gets around the game world is totally different to Batman's. Her fighting style is totally different as well. You know, she kind of works the crowd. She moves fast between enemies and chips away at their energy and, and kind of takes them down one by one. So, uh, yeah, it's a real, it's a different narrative take, a different change of pace for the player. But from a gameplay perspective, it's a fundamentally different character. Now, uh, people were really surprised by the, uh, the the Scarecrow segments from the first game. Have you, without revealing anything, how many surprises do you have? Because it seems like a lot has been revealed before the release. 
we have talked a lot, you know, over the last 18 months we've talked uh, up a lot of characters and a lot of content because I think that's the question that people really want to know when it comes to any Batman experience, like, who are the villains? So, um, you know, we've, we've revealed a lot of them, but if you know anything about Rocksteady you know that for us it's really important that players have a genuine sense of surprise in the experience that they have, so there's, there's still a few things that we think are really going to, uh, you know, take people's breath away when they, when they finally see them. In essence, this is a Rocksteady's third game, only their third game after yeah, yeah. a small, I think it was the digital download title before Arkham Bat uh, Asylum. Did you Urban expect a skyrocket response? Did you <laughs> expect a skyrocket this far, this fast? Uh, it's so hard to say. I think if when we look back, we kind of feel very lucky that Batman came along to, you know, to bring light into our days because the opportunity to work on Batman is not is something that not a lot of people get and that's why we take it so seriously you know we really treat this opportunity as a once in a lifetime um, and if you come into Rocksteady you know you'll, you'll feel the intensity with which we all work and I think that's what really makes the difference in the end quality of the game that I think everyone can see and feel the quality in it and that is purely driven by our passion and our commitment and our dedication to making the greatest game of our careers. 